Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Pythons at the table. Um, hey, beautiful. Is that a boy or a girl? Or do you think? Female. Female? Yeah, I've got a turquoise female that I'm looking for a mate for. Um, this one was hatched at the San Diego Zoo and then it was in Memphis for a while before it came here. Yeah, these guys are wacky. These are very wacky. The, 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 the black mama that you saw upstairs uh, has a very interesting history. Um, it, a guy in Kansas City had bought that snake, and it was the very first snake he'd ever owned in his life. <laughs> oh, good starter snake. Yeah. <laughs> he saw, on a, saw a special on Animal Planet and got on the internet and ordered him up a, a baby. And I guess the first time that he went to clean the enclosure, he popped the lid off and the snake shot out and went around the room a few times. And I guess his heart was up in his throat and he managed to get it. Somehow he got it back in there without getting himself bitten, but it freaked him out enough. I mean, this is a guy that had never even kept a garter snake before in his life. I mean, never had a snake, period. And he buys a, a loaded stick of dynamite, literally. Worse, yeah. worse than dynamite. A grenade, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, so they call it zoo. Well, the zoo doesn't have, you know, they don't keep venomous snakes in Kansas City. And so a friend of mine, David Nieves, used to be there with the Herb Society, the zoo had to call him. He was the president at the time. And uh, he called me and he said, uh, he called here and he called Jesse at Omaha and he said, uh, if one of you two guys go take this, they're going to use that. And he said, there's nobody here that can. Do it. So he brought it down the next day so we've yeah. had it ever since but that's been like I don't think 45 years ago now five years ago yeah. yeah I don't think Jesse has uh, well he's got serum for him but I don't think he keeps no. Mambas he's gotten a bunch of animals for me but uh, um, no African stuff just uh, Papua New Guinea this is a this is an interesting snake that's um, a cross it is and we didn't do it we didn't do it, it we got uh, some diamondbacks in from another zoo uh, <laughs> and I'm, all, I'm not, I'm not going to put them in the mix okay um, but it was a, uh, it was actually a mixed species exhibit, uh, like southeastern flatland, pine flatlands exhibit that had, you know, eastern diamondbacks, cane break rattlesnakes, um, maybe some pine snakes or something in it. And uh, this is a cross between a, a hortus and a adamantius. Yeah. yeah, I've seen a couple of those. Uh, I have to say, this is the prettiest uh, of the bunch because it got mostly uh, amantius out of it. Yeah. There are certain ones were eaten by the corn snakes. Yeah, <laughs> what happened was we had in that big mix exhibit upstairs. We had at the time we had two corn snakes in there, and we had what we believed were just the two females. We never put them together because we weren't interested in producing uh, eastern diamondbacks. And one night, um, one of the staff members who was here at the time was leaving and noticed that the uh, snake was giving birth. The corn snake had been eating because they, they weren't even breaking out of their membranes. I you know we never heard of corn snakes eating rattlesnakes, but. You learn a lot, you know? Yeah. And uh, they got the one out, but then the next day they took uh, the snake up to the hospital and an x rayer and saw all the other babies inside of it. But as this thing started, as it grew a little bit, so I, this thing doesn't look like an adamantium. So I made a call to the colleague of mine from the snake tomorrow and he goes, There was a silence on the phone when I told him that it had babies because these were the ones we got had been offspring that had been born at the zoo and they left them in with the adults and raised them up for a while. Well, obviously, this male hortus had bred this female. They didn't think she was willing to breed, but obviously she was. And then she came here along with her brother. And they'd been separate the whole time they were here. We didn't have them together. They never been the male. So she obviously came in gravid from the other the other zoo. And, and wow. it happens. I mean, they, he said, we had it happen here several times. So, it's, hmm. you know, who knows? What do you do for infection control here, since that's one of my big uh, favorites? Well, we... Uh, Anything new comes in the zoo, regardless if it's a reptile or a big mammal, goes through quarantine up at our, our hospital facility. Okay. We have reptile rooms up there. Any snake that comes in spends three months up there. It's the longest quarantine of any, any species that comes into the zoo. So we do three months up there. We do, if you have three negative fecals, um, we do blood work on them while they're up there. Um, and then if there's any speculation about anything, they can spend longer periods of time up there. So everything gets a full, you know, 
clean bill of health before they're released and allowed to come down here? So. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I don't have quite such a sophisticated facility, but I certainly do as much infection control, a couple of different uh, ways of killing things, and, and I have a quarantine room that I keep animals quarantined for, for two to three months. Uh, uh, I've actually had a couple of, uh, of false positives come back on uh, crypto, which is a bit disturbing, uh, but um, the subsequent two were negative. And you know they do PCR on that, so it's eh. yeah. Um, but every, everything else, thank God, it, that you know has been clean, and well, that's why I can send to you guys yeah. and other other yeah. ACA facilities. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, I keep telling people, um, you know, even if you don't have a sophisticated facility, you can run an effective quarantine. Any hook or any food that goes in a cage gets disinfected yeah, yeah. before it goes in the next one. Yeah, we, you know, the we've used over the years a number of different disinfectants. I mean, when I started here in '87, we were using the local and then they went to uh, um, I think what after that they used Vetrosap. Uh, we use what our favorite still is is just dilute bleach, mm -hmm. you know, because it kills things that a lot of these. Uh, well, we use chlorhexidine, a uh, dilute chlorhexidine that is soaked in the bottom of our bucket so that. As we're putting snakes in there, they're not, you know, sitting right on, on, on bare, you know, plastic. They're, you know, soaked. And that was when uh, Peter Taylor, who was the zoological man before Mark, he had come from the Bronx, and that's one they had come up with the Bronx to was instead of having to literally wash out the barrel every time, which would just get, it'd be such a time eater, you know. That's... They just said, well, the vet staff was like, well, let's just do this really dilute chlorhexidine solution, put it in there. If they happen to drink it, it's not going to do anything to them. And we adopted that. We, we presented it to our vets. We've been doing that soak in the, in the barrels for and, years. And so what's what's the dilution? What we use uh, is a 25, I think we use about 25, uh, 25 cc's to a, 25 cc's to a gallon. Yeah, I believe what it is. Chlorhexidine. Yeah. And we just put it just enough where there's enough in there in the bottom of the bucket, you know. And, okay. and that, now if the snake takes a, you know, has a bowel movement while it's in there, we to dump everything out and rinse it out. But, but usually if they don't urate or, you know, pass feces in the bucket, you could use that for that day and then dump it out, rinse it, put new stuff in. But that way, there's some sort of disinfectant between every snake that's going in there. Well, yeah, because usually what I do is I... You know, after a snake goes in a, a temporary bin while the cage is being serviced, um, you know, I have to clean it in between every snake. And that, as you said, is a time killer. Yeah. And uh, uh, also, you know, compliance-wise, you get sick of doing that after a while and you cut corners. And that's when you run into trouble. Yeah. So, okay, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll uh, look into getting some and uh, adopt that. Uh, uh, and, you know, my listeners who all, you know, keep herps and stuff, uh, again, you know, you need to keep strict quarantine on your animals because uh, I hate getting emails from people. My snake is, you know, coughing up blood and all sorts of other things. And, uh, and then, you know, you're in for a bad ride uh, until it burns through your collection. So there's ways of, of preventing that. And... Uh, you know, these are the these are the experts in the field because they get all sorts of animals in, and you know they have all sorts of you know very expensive collections, and you know you need to uh, to heed their warning uh, because it will bite you eventually. Uh, even even AZA zoos get a stuff run through from time to time. So, all right, well that that's fantastic uh, info. In fact. Uh we're sending some animals. I've been doing exchanges with the Tula Exeterium in um, Russia for a number of years, and we're getting ready to send a number of these babies to them uh, in the next month or so. It's nice to be lounging by the pool in the pool there in the afternoon, huh? You're only missing a cold beer. <laughs> Here's one of the young. Oh yeah. Mauritanica. Yeah, they're fantastic animals. They've grown well, Matt. I haven't looked at them since I got back. Yes, they have. Wow. So I was just feeding them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are little, these are neodishas, right? Yeah. yeah I haven't ever, can't, can't even get these anymore. No. Cornutus. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got some Cornutus. They're, they're extra special. Are they, you got them all on rodents? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of mine are eating uh, frozen thawed geckos uh, that are scented with mouse, so I get them switched over eventually. Um, I also have uh, some Protobothrops elegans that I just fell in love with that are just spectacular. That genus is one of my favorites. Oh, absolutely, and I also have uh, Protobothrops nucosquamatus. We just hatched out. We just hatched out uh, fifteen of them total so far. Yeah. From wow, they're they're really really cool animals too. Yeah, the adults down here they stay upstairs. Man, those guys have such pointy heads. It's not even funny. I mean, you see the bottom jaw open. It's like where the hell did that come from? It, it doesn't even look <laughs> like it would fit in there. But it does. Uh, they're very, very cool animals also. We have tocarensis too. We have oh yeah, I've, I've had tocarensis for a while. Um, still on that quest to get uh, uh, Flavoviridis and uh, some of the others. Uh, I, tra I, I traded off uh, uh, some animals to, a, uh, to help with a project in, in Japan and they, they sent a whole bunch of uh, Japanese stuff to me. You don't see them very often. Hey, you're on Viper Keeper channel. That was quite the day when these guys were born, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And to get a perfect 20-20 uh, sex ratio, uh, that almost never happens. Uh, just an amazing species. Uh, and, and watching their... Uh, the the couple that produce the 09 babies, to watch their uh, courting is just unbelievable. You know, I had seen lots of snakes court and breed, but um, uh, watching these guys, it's, it's different from the other bittis, mm -hmm. because these guys are really, really fast. Um, I sent a, a wild caught male down with this uh, 09 female that I had to, to Brad and I said watch out for the for the boy because uh, it is like a puff adder on crack cocaine <laughs> and he wrote me back and says well, you were right about that it is the m most amazing defense posture I don't know if these guys do it yet you like sitting in that huh actually I think those are the containers you sent you might have sent those. Yeah, those are those are the containers I sent them in. Yeah. It's like you know they were bonded to them because that's what they went into after birth, uh, and they stayed in uh, just to uh, just to make things easy because uh, you know putting things in deli cup is not my yeah. my favorite thing. Even though doing it with a Uplex makes it a whole lot easier, but uh, yeah, Mark's pretty much has been his uh, has been his babies. Man, they're just uh, just fantastic. Hi there. You decided not to stay in there, huh? As soon as we get uh, some other bloodlines, uh, you know, we can uh, we can trade some stuff back and forth uh, since we have stock now. We don't really have space, and uh, I have an exporter. But with the internet, the exporters find out what they're really worth uh, to the collector, and and then you get raised over the cold. Have you ever had them spit at you, even though nope. allegedly? No, mine nope. never. We we, uh, we initially had the mask and the whole nine yards, and we've never seen it. Well, you know, I've seen an eastern diamondback that sort of lunged really aggressively and spat. Well, basically, with the exhale, it released venom and it sort of nebulized it. But yeah. that was as close to spitting as as possible. And actually, I know somebody who got venom in their eyes and it really didn't do a whole heck of a lot. They washed it out real quick. Um, these, these are just fantastic. What are you using for anti-sera for these guys? Well, we have the Thai, uh, well, we actually for a while we did Thai green tree. Right. We're using this bivalent out of Taiwan now. Okay. With Dan Kyler, our, uh, our right. anti-venom. Uh, oh yeah, I use, that's what he's I right use Dan also. Yeah. Um, so that's what we that's what we bought a few years ago. So we have the we have the bivalent to cover well all of our trimercerus snakes. So particularly the bigger ones. So the you know Zaurmia, Protobothrops, and all those are probably better with those. The, the green tree would probably cover most of the smaller. Now been split up into a number of different genera. Yeah, but I, I think I think that would be for the southern part of the range. You'd be more effective.